In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I color grade this video step by step so you can easily follow along. If you want some clips and a note tree to practice along, I will drop a free download link in the description box. Then you can simply drag your file into the gallery and drag it from the gallery into your notes section. I'm going to turn off all the notes by pressing Command D and I'm going to delete the ones that I won't be using for this clip. So you can follow along note by note. I'm going to start with the color space transform, the LUT and the saturation note here all together. Don't worry, I'm not going to sell you a LUT, I'm just using one that is built in in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to reset the three notes from scratch. I'm going to effects, go to color space, transform right here. For your input, you're going to use your own camera settings. For me, that was Sony S Gamma 3 Cine, Sony S Log 3. And I'm going to work in the Ari White Gamut 3 space in the Log C3. This is a color space that gives me a nice looking image at the end and it works well with the codec looks built in in DaVinci Resolve. This is just a personal preference as is color grading. I've actually learned this from Rajib from Melior Studios. Then I'm going to my LUT section, right click, LUT, Film Looks and then I'm going to choose the D65 right here. Then I'm going to my saturation. I'm going to the RGB mixer. I'm going to set red here at 2.0, green here at 2.0, and blue here at 2.0. Okay, so there's that already. Now we're going to move over to the white balance. Tap right here. I'm going to reset it completely. If I look at my image now, it kind of looks too warm for the look that I'm going for. I want it a little bit cooler. So I'm going to my primary wheels and I'm going to drag down the temperature slider until I'm happy with the results. Somewhere right here. For me, in this workflow, this is the easiest way to just adjust your color temperature. If we check our scopes right here, we can see that our blacks are on the low end side. So I might just bring my lift slightly up to get some details back in the shadows. You see? And next I want to bring down the highlights. We have here some harsh light from the sun. So I might want to drag it down a little bit somewhere around here. That, that looks around good, but I might come back to my exposure note later after I've done the S-curve and the vignettes. You will, you will see exactly why. Let's go over to the S-curve. I'm going to reset the note and I'm going to my curve step. I'm going to put a dot in the middle. This section represents the midtones. This part stays untouched. Then I'm going to put a dot here, which represents the dark areas and I'm going to slightly lower this dot to add some extra contrast here. Then I'm going to do the same here, put a dot here, but I'm going to drag it upwards. So that brings back a little bit of brightness in those highlights. So this is called the S-curve because of its S-shape. And this technique is very common in color grading and it will make your image look more punchy, deep and more contrasty in a balanced way. Just look at the difference in the dark areas and look at how the color of the red changes into a more deep, nice red. Now if I look at the overall image, although the red looks very vibrant and punchy, it's slightly too saturated for me as I'm going for a more softer look here. Also the greens are very bright green and they take away some of the attention that should go towards the car. Let's fix those things right now. Therefore, we have uh, two parallel nodes and this parallel mixer to set it up. Just right click, add node, parallel mixer, and just drag the green dots here and connect them there. There we go. Let's start with the grass. Let's uh, name this node grass, reset the node. 
to do this, I'm going to the curve step and I'm going to U versus U. And I'm going to click somewhere on the green of the grass. And then here will appear some dots. Now I'm going to drag the middle dot downwards or upwards to change the color. And I'm going to gently just push it upwards like this. Now I'm going to my U versus saturation tab. I'm going to click the same. Now I'm going to slightly lower the contrast. So that will give us something like this. So we go from that punchy green to that softer green, but I'm going to still change the U a little bit higher. And you can always make your selection a little bit wider if the whole green area isn't selected. That looks much better already. We're just going to change it ever so slightly. So that's the before and that's the after. That's very good. Now if we look at our image, we see that the red of the car is just a little bit too saturated. It's not well balanced with the rest of the image. So how we're going to change that is we go to our car node here. I'm going to reset it. And I'm going to do actually the same, but only with the saturation. I'm going to select the car here. Some dots will appear. I'm going to just make my selection a little bit wider so we are sure that we have the whole red of the car, right? Then I'm going to slightly lower the middle dot to decrease the saturation. So here we decrease it completely. But of course, it's so much just ever so slightly. We can always come back to this note later. That looks good. So that's before, after, maybe a little bit more. Something like this looks good to me. Then we're going to move over to the next note, which is a vignette. This actually draws even more attention to the car. You will see exactly why in just a moment. We're going to window. We're going to select a circular window here and we're going to just change the size and um, position uh, by selecting it in the middle. You can select it here to make it bigger. And then we are going to also soften it with the pink dots. Now you see here the middle is selected. So we're going to invert the mask. Now we see what we have selected right here. Then we go to our primary wheels and I want to kind of darken the outside to draw more attention to the car. I'm going to do it with the offset. I'm going to drag it to the left. I like it pretty dark. I like it moody. So just do it to your own preference. Play around with the sliders. Somewhere around here should be fine. That's before and after. Right, it makes a huge difference. For me, personally, I love vignettes. Now I'm going to the next note, which is something similar. It's called a gradient. So I'm going to select the note, going to my window step and select a gradient. I'm going to flip it and soften it maybe by dragging the arrow up and down. Or you can use here the sliders as well. Then we're going to do the same with the offset. And then you can see that we darken this part of the area. You can always come back and change it however you like. I'm going to leave it somewhere around the 16-ish. That looks good. So before, after, before, after. That looks good. Now the next note, the blacks, is a pretty important one for me personally. We're going to make the blacks a little bit more black. Because if we watch closely right now, they're kind of blue. We're going to fix that. I'm going to reset the notes. For this, I'm going to the qualifier, 3D. And I'm going to drag a line here over the blacks. And to see the selection, we can hit Shift H. And that looks about good. Good. You can always play around here with the settings to clean up your selection. 
Then I'm going to the curve step. I'm going to saturation versus saturation. I'm going to put a dot here and I'm going to lower this dot right here. And that's going to desaturate the blacks. Now, if you look closely to your wheel here, this is the before, which looks bluish. And this is an after. It's a subtle change, but all these subtle changes compound to your look that you want, right? Then the very last note is one that I always actually have on standard. I will just reset it. I'm gonna select it. Then we go here to the blur tab and I'm gonna select my radius here to about 0.47, which will slightly sharpen your image. This is always a good idea when you post to social media. So this is the before and an after. It's just subtle, but again, many subtle changes compound to your creative look. So once you're done with the sharpening and your last note here, you can just scrub through your clip and look at the overall image and you can just go back to any note and change whatever you like. I'm gonna check here my exposure S curve and my vignette a little bit more. Maybe drag up the midtones here. Go back to my S curve. Make it a little bit more punchy, dramatic. You can just play around and see what you like. I'll keep it somewhere here. And I'm also going to change my vignette a little bit more. I'm going to drag it down to make it a little bit more dramatic. Somewhere like this. Slightly lower the highlights. Here we go. And that's the before and after our color grade. If you enjoy this format of me just color grading some clips, please do let me know in the comments so I know if I have to make more videos like this. And if you want to learn how I easily expose my log footage, make sure to watch this video as I show you exactly how I do it with just a few simple techniques.